And we're back, back for another episode of Startup Hustle. Matt DeCourcy here with Matt Watson. Hi, Matt. What's going on? I want to start a startup. We're going to start like a new podcast in a podcast. Yeah, well, I, and I want to start a tech company. You know anything about that? Uh, I don't really recommend it. <laughs> we'll talk. I don't either. And we're going to talk all about that. Now, before we get started, because this is episode one of a, of a very interesting undertaking. So Matt, for the longest time, we have talked about doing a, how, a series about how to start a tech company. And here we are. 52 part, dude. Five, two, once a week. Are you going to be able to handle it? I'm ready. Okay, so as we kind of get into the whole everything that we're going to do, and once again, this is a weekly series. It's all going to be related. It's going to be you and me, buddy. We're back. Woohoo! Now, there's so much that goes into starting any business, and all businesses are different, but a lot of it is the same. However, starting a tech company, there, there's there's a lot of things that I think that I would like to warn people about, make sure that people understand, and a whole lot of other things that I plan on getting into. When it comes to just the overall general statement of the how to start a tech company series, I mean, what what do you want to accomplish? Like, what's your what what do you feel like you need to share, warn, or do for any anybody that's going to listen? Well, I think it's cool to give everybody the kind of unfiltered advice about all the different things. And, uh, you know, from our first topic today about why do you want to start a startup? And um, there's some really bad reasons and there's some really good reasons and excited to share all that with people. And, and before we get into the bullets of that, why, you know, you started two tech companies, you've been involved in several, we own a couple together. What, why do you? Why did you want to start a startup, Matt? Um, you know, the first time it was not really a startup. It was a uh, basically like an accidental business. Like I'm just trying to work with some customers and a, and a guy and solve a problem and get paid for it. And it just grew from there, right? And and that's kind of how full scale started a little bit, right? It's like, oh, we you know we got some customers lined up. We got a problem. We can solve it. Let's go do it. Um, you know, Stackify was the same way for me. It's like, I, I had my own problem I wanted to solve. Like I understood the problem, but it was a much bigger undertaking and a lot more risk involved, um, took a lot of capital, um, which is kind of a different kind of startup. Yeah. And you, you talk about the accidental business. A lot of people do start a business accidentally. I, my, my first quote, real business was more or less an accidental business, but that's a that is a why uh, for a lot of the reasons that uh, why people start a business, and we're going to get into a whole lot of different reasons, and we're also going to include so our community and the Startup Hustle chat, and I want to encourage anybody listening to go to Facebook. Super easy to find us. Just type in Startup Hustle in the little search box, and you'll find us. We have a ha have a rapidly growing community of entrepreneurs, founders, and people that love business that are in there talking now. They don't know this, but I have secretly been crowdsourcing material from them by asking. So part of what we're going to talk about in this episode, and, and Matt, you know, before we get too far into this, if you do want to start a tech company, you and I own a business that can help people do that. Today's episode of Startup Hustle is brought to you by Fullscale.io, helping you build a software team quickly and affordably. If you do decide to start a tech company, you're going to rapidly find that there is a massive shortage of programmers here in the U.S. and a lot yeah. of other places. And, you know, that's how we accidentally started our business. We were trying to solve a problem within a different business mm -hmm. and realized that everybody has the exact same problem. So we at full, go to fullscale.io. We'll help you find programmers. I'll tell you what. We're pretty good at it. We have a couple hundred employees worldwide. We can help you find, get what you need. And we'll also talk to you about some of the stuff that we'll talk about in the series, which is how to be successful. But part of being successful means avoiding pitfalls, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So 
And by the way, for those of you that that might just be figuring out who we are or listening, look up Matt Watson. He knows a lot about starting tech companies. He's he's he he doesn't always like to tell you that, but he's he's pretty much the guy. So I learn a whole lot. I'm looking Matt, actually, I'm looking forward to learning a lot from you. So let's talk about some of the the basic reasons that what are the the real the reasons why? You know, so you say, why do you want to start one? So I, I did some research. I, our team did some research. <laughs> I, I'm, hey, I, with Startup Hustle TV, our new web series about entrepreneurship, we promise to be transparent. So I'm, I'm being really, really transparent. I don't, we don't do the hard work. We just talk about the hard work other people do. But okay, so some of the reasons why, uh, and I think probably one of the most common ones is that people see an opportunity. And that's also probably one of the biggest pitfalls. Mm. The seeing an opportunity and not understanding anything about it. Like, yeah, oh, I see an opportunity, it. so I should chase it. Yeah. that How to execute it, what it's going to take to execute it. Don't really understand the industry vertical that you're going into, but you're like, oh, I, maybe I can solve that. You know, it's like, for example, uh, we had a guest on a, that uh, had made improved like carburetors and stuff for motorcycles, right? And so it's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But then it's like, nobody in the United States uses motorcycles. <laughs> so, okay, where's the opportunity, right? And he found an opportunity, he's been successful, but you know, just because there's an opportunity to solve a problem, like as that is an example, it's okay, yeah, you can do that, but who's gonna buy it? What's your go-to-market strategy? How much capital do you need to do it? Do you have the right team? Do you have the expertise? Like there's a hundred other things to think through than just be just beyond saying, oh yeah, I can solve that. And so many people start with like, oh, I can solve that and literally go no further. They just talk about how they could solve it and never go past that. It, on some level, though, talking about it is what you should be doing early because you, you say just because you see an opportunity doesn't mean you chase it. Yeah. And you know, you and I, and we, you know, we business partners, podcast hosts, you know, I was the best man in your wedding. I'd say we know each other kind of well. And we've had this discussion outside of the podcast a lot. And we're referring to entrepreneurial ADD. Just because you see a shiny thing doesn't mean you should be paying attention to it and chasing it. And, and, and as I am continue, as 2021 arrives and I will turn another year in the calendar, giving me officially and statistically more age and wisdom than you, Matt. Um, I, one of the things that I've really learned is you got to be careful about just chasing opportunity for the mm -hmm. sake of doing it because you, uh, well, Matt, let's t tell everyone about the backpack. Well, that's, so that's a, a metaphor I use a lot. And Basically, really, really, I use this metaphor more about like it's Stackify, right? It's okay, we can build this new product or this new feature, but every time we build a new feature, it's something else we have to put in our backpack and carry around with us. Like if we forever have to support this thing, our customers are gonna have problems with it. We have to maintain it. We have to continue to improve it, support it, all these things. And there's only so many things you can carry up the mountain in your backpack. And the more shit you want to do, it's the more stuff you got to carry around and it just weighs you down. You, you know, in, in Congress with the backpack, there's something that you've heard me say quite a bit. And I, and I, and for those of you that have quoted me online, you seem to choose this one a lot. You know, it, 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 what's easier climbing the mountain yourself or asking those on top to pull you up. Yeah. And, and, you know, so drop the backpack and if you have an opportunity, I think the best advice I can give is go find someone that may have done something similar or even anywhere near that and go ask them what it's like to do it. And that's part of you know, how you and I got to know each other is just talking about opportunity, talking about our history, talking about a lot of different things, interviewing you for my book, Million Dollar Bedroom. And you know, there's, you know, there's a lot of different things out there. All right, so moving on from that, Another reason that many start a startup is they have an idea that solves a problem or delivers value. Now, that's kind of a subcategory of opportunity. You may have already identified an opportunity there. And, but Matt, what, you, what, what is value? Like what does a business need to do <laughs> or should it do before it actually says, okay, it's a business? 
Well, here's the problem, right? Is you get somebody that let's say they love TikTok and they use it and they're like, oh, but it should have this feature. So I'm going to go create my own version of TikTok that is different. And the only difference is it has this one feature. And then you ask the question like, who pays for that shit? How are you going to make any money? Like, are you really delivering value that somebody is going to pay for? And in general, this is why I'm not really a fan of consumer-based things because consumers don't pay for anything. I'd much rather solve a problem that a business will pay for because businesses have money and they pay for things. And that whole delivering value part of it, I think is really critical. And, re and people really struggle with consumer-based things on if they're going to be ad supported or how to get people to pay for it. There's so many, a lot of startups in Kansas City have been through this and most all of them always fail because they can never figure out the right business model of just working with consumers. Now, in, here in a few episodes, we're going to get in depth as to why startups fail. And they do more than they don't. Oh, yeah. So when it comes to your opportunity and your problem and whatever, I'm just realistically, the numbers are not in your favor. So people have to want to pay you to solve that problem or for that value. Like there's got to be an ROI to it. That's the key. You know, and value comes in a lot of shapes and forms. It really, when it comes to, you know, Matt, you mentioned your preference for B2B. If you're so business to business, if you are have a B2B solution, it better help them sell more or spend less. Because mm -hmm. if it doesn't do one of those two and it's not, and the benefits of it aren't really clear, you are going to have a very, very difficult time selling it, getting people to understand it, or get anyone else to do it. Now the, now, the next item on the list is reminds me of, of Russ Lenmark and Veriship. Yeah. And yeah. you worked for Russ. And what Veriship, uh, which by the way, congratulations, Russ, because dude, that, that company got big. I, I mean, it really did. And it's done really, really well. But that business was created that they you you were a part of that right didn't you create some you were creating some kind of value or efficiency in your own business and all of a sudden you realize oh wow this well, could bring and deliver value let me tell that story for a second so uh yeah. russ's company was called ticket solutions and they sell you know concert and sports tickets online you go to ticketsolutions.com they're based in kansas city and i worked there uh back in like 2001 and 2002 and as you can imagine as a ticket broker they they send a lot of tickets via FedEx and and uh, UPS, and you know what FedEx and UPS does all the time? They don't deliver them on time, and that's really critical for concert tickets and stuff, right? Because you want to get them on time, the tickets are useless. So they would send like hundreds of packages a month, and they had this great idea of auditing all of them to figure out if they were being delivered on time, and if they weren't, you could get a refund or a, a credit back from FedEx or UPS. And that idea is what eventually turned into being Bearship, which ended up being a bigger business than Ticket Solutions was itself. And Ticket Solutions, sure. you know, business has, I think, kind of been on the decline over the last 20 years because of online, you know, all the reasons. And Bearship was hugely successful. So I was in the ticket business for eight years. That was the first business I started. And that's actually how you and I got to be friends because we were talking about it. Like yeah. we had actually made a comment about something else. And I mentioned uh, something about tickets and we started talking about being a ticket broker. So um, you were correct with the benefit on that product, but there was one other thing. So the real, and we had Russ on the show because uh, that was the, the look, uh, look in our feed. It's early too. It's like in the t first hundred episodes somewhere. And he is a super entrepreneur. And um, so you were the, if FedEx, so a lot of times you'll have a two day delivery, but it'll come on the third day, mm -hmm. which whether you know this or not as a FedEx or a UPS uh, customer, they have to give you your money back because they didn't deliver, literally didn't deliver. Yep. So what had, and I remember Russ talking about this because they were just doing general auditing. And I remember what a pain in the butt that is because you'll send out hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of things. And they realized they had hired basically a bookkeeper to kind of look at it. And he, and they said, well, 20% of these didn't even arrive on time. And he, and because it was such a big number, he said, oh my God, that's yep. a lot of yep. money that, that that we need to get refunded or discounted or something. And then all of a sudden he's like, oh, well, okay. 
so they they built it and it and it did great things and that, that on some levels that's what we did with gigabook because gigabook was originally a build in our ticket company we were using it to let people know well we use it for marketing calendars a whole lot of different stuff so you never know how things are going to get started well and and uh ticket <laughs> solutions actually had a whole nother company they built in house as another example they built their own and i i helped build this their own point of sale system and websites for ticket brokers that uh, yep. kept track of their inventory and customers and they built it for their own their own needs and then realized that other people in the industry wanted it so you know as we talk about mm -hmm. building something and then kind of spinning it out which is kind of the category we're talking about it's another a good example of that another good example of that is say sprint here in town which is now t-mobile you know they collect all this data about cell phones and their usage and locations and all that and they figured out hey that could be its own data company that's used for advertising and marketing. And that got spun out into a different company here in Kansas City. And a lot of times these are the best kind of startups, ones that start in a larger company, they're building something <clears throat> industry specific, and they're able to carve that out of their primary business into its own business. But that's not usually that that's usually the entrepreneur that owns that original business. It's not really it's like a startup within a startup. It's not the first startup, you know. I think the reason that you, know, you mentioned that those are sometimes easier, well, it's because they don't require, uh, they don't often in the very earliest stages, they don't require a separate set of resources and capital. And they're just kind of born within the, you know, like we, I mean, we built some gigabook was birthed from my, uh, from my ticket company. Cause, yeah. and, and on some of that, it was just existing to be built because, in tickets, it's so seasonal. So there's like these really like, you'll have two months where you're just like, you you won't do anything but that business. And then two months, uh, the next two months might be wishing that those prior two months were back. So, you know, so it's sometimes about keeping people busy or doing different things, but building tools that matter. And like I said, the, the no need to a startup inside of another business. And we see that a lot. That's really mm -hmm. common. I'm seeing more and more of that with a lot of bigger companies. And we experienced a lot of that here in Kansas City with the way that Launch KC, and go to launchkc.org and check out what the what Kansas City is doing with business accelerators. So they were giving away $50,000 grants to like a dozen companies a year. And, and, you know, and that was great, but they pivoted a little bit because a lot of corporate partners, like recently we did BCP Tech, which is actually where we buy our insurance from. And it's a huge insurance company and they made small investments into uh, seven different insurance tech companies. So they were, cause they wanted some of, they want to use the solutions, maybe have a vested interest in it moving yep. forward. And so there's a, and while that's not that true startup and a startup thing, it is still, it's similar. Yep. And you know, it, it, now the next thing I got on the list, I feel like this is very in, in alignment with you. Now, Matt, now, now I, here, I'll just give you some free advertising. Go to stackify.com. And that's Matt's current company, which, by the way, is an Inc. 500 company and do, does amazing stuff that's also amazingly complex. It's uh, application performance management. Once again, stackify.com. We'll put a link in the show notes so you can check it out. Matt, you are an industry expert already in the software industry because of your first company, Venn Solutions. But often people start a business because they are an industry expert and they want to create their own thing. Now, that isn't exactly the reason, but you were clearly an industry expert after after exiting Vim Solutions. But did that was that well, I think you were just bored. I think well, you were just, <laughs> I, I wasn't an industry expert at what Stackify does, though. I was an industry expert in automotive, and it would have made sure. more sense, and I probably would have been smarter to start a software automotive. company in automotive. <laughs> and I think there's two there's two parts to this. It's an industry expert and it could be your knowledge that can go help build something or it really could be your connections. And so another great example of this, uh, somebody I know here in Kansas City worked at a, a construction company, was very well connected, knew lots of people in town. So he left there and started his own painting company. And he's really successful because of all the connections he had, you know. And so being an industry expert could be just the connections you have and knowing people to go start a business that isn't necessarily a startup, but you know, it's your connections are super valuable. 
I'm going to disagree with you a little bit on your industry expertise because you were at, you were uh, okay. You were an expert as a developer. Now, Matt, it, it, once again, Matt's Matt's humble and doesn't always talk about this kind of stuff. But Matt's original company, Venn Solutions, which by the way, they sold for 150 million bucks, so that was validated at that point. But you know, you you guys were doing some really, really uh, cutting edge stuff at the time when it came to ca- cloud computing and the, just a whole lot of you, you really create a lot of efficiency for different businesses. You did a lot of stuff that was ahead of its curve. And sure. you and and along the way now, I did the same thing at my own company on the way to Gigabook. We were doing things 10 years ago that aren't high technology now. But like I, you look back, at it, there was no one doing these things. But it created that expertise. And in your case, the expertise was, in my opinion, understanding what other people like you really needed. Sure. Yeah, and that's true. We t- why we're here, what a stack if I do? Um, our product is used by software developers to help improve the performance of their applications. So we help them observe how their applications are performing, uh, how to improve it, how to monitor that how to prevent issues, fix issues. So it's fair to say that anybody listening that wants to start a tech company should probably go to stackify.com and check out Absolutely, what's up, yeah. right? We can help. And don't you, you even have a have a free product, don't you? We do. Yeah, we do. By the way, it's code that checks code. If you don't <laughs> know that stuff, that's how I just, people, people ask me all the time, like, what does Stackify do? It, it, nerdy stuff, it's code that checks code. But but look, that's important at an early stage business. And we'll talk about that a little further down the road. Uh, you know, like that's a tool that go that tries to help you find problems that you might not identify on your own for whatever reason, which is important, which is important because, you know, you're you don't want it. What you don't know is in the early stages is often killer. So, yeah. OK, next on the list, Matt. So the next we have, you think you have a better solution than the existing solution. And in some ways that's what Venn Solutions was. Like we we created a CRM system for car dealers and CRM systems had already existed for car dealers, but they weren't very good at internet leads. They weren't very good at like sending emails. And like the first versions of those, if you sent email, you had to literally type HTML, like to be able to send HTML, like they were that archaic. And they were server based, like they weren't web based that, you know, and so we had a better solution, but there's a huge flaw with this idea that you have a better solution. Your idea and your solution better be 10 times better. If it's like a little bit better, ain't nobody give a shit. Like if you came to me and said, Matt, I got a better solution than QuickBooks. I'd be like, QuickBooks isn't broken. Well, I could save you money. I pay $70 a month for it. How much are you really going to save? Like you better have a really better solution. And that is the challenge. People get hung up on like, well, I made a better mousetrap. Like who cares? It better be a lot better. I think that this, why this reason why is dangerous. Oh yeah. For the reasons that you're mentioning. And yeah, I, because of my role, so I talk to a lot of people at Full Scale. So once again, our company, Full Scale, Matt and I own it together. You know, we work with dozens of tech companies. We help them build tech teams for their tech companies. So we, I've over the last three years, I've talked to a hell of a lot of people about a hell of a lot of things. We've done it ourselves. We've helped other people do it. But I tell people all the time, and then they're in the early stage, the exact same thing that you said. Like, be careful because, yeah, but, but, but Matt, you, your solution for QuickBooks, but, but Matt, my solution for QuickBooks, it's going to, it's half the price. I still wouldn't care because the effort that it would take for me to yeah. get it from A to B. And also I got other shit to do. $35 have, a month is not my problem. I have other legitimate problems. So unless you can solve my number one problem, you're wasting my time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I mentioned earlier in the episode that I was secretly crowdsourcing uh, info. I, I I asked the Startup Hustle chat on Facebook why people start startups. And I want to talk about some of what our listeners had to say. Because 
that's a group full of people that know a lot of stuff, man. There are a lot of people in there talking about these things that are giving some very, very, very informed responses. And I, I let's share a few of them. So I think this is a good one. I think this is a reason that the, I, but this, this reason has, has a plus and a minus column. So yeah, someone, we had the comment, I want freedom. Uh, be very, very careful starting a business because you think it's going to give you freedom. Um, it might at some point, but it depends on how you define freedom. Because I'll tell you what, I, I very much feel chained to my business or my startups or have in the past. I didn't feel like I had freedom. Now, technically I could, I could have just gone and done whatever I wanted, wherever I wanted with whoever I wanted for however long that I wanted, but that wouldn't, that, that wouldn't have lasted too long. So what do you feel yeah. about starting your business for freedom? I mean, do you, do you think I have some good points there or do you disagree? Um, but if you want to take off the rest of the afternoon, you could do it. True. Right. And, you know, I think for some people, mm -hmm. I would say this also aligns with people that kind of want a lifestyle business. It's like, oh, I, you know, I, I only work part time or I work when I, I want to work. It's not necessarily a big business. It's like, it's like the guy with the painting company. He's like, oh, I got 12 people that paint for me. I take a couple calls a day. I sell a couple new accounts. I do some invoicing. The rest of the time, I just hang out. I do whatever I want. I mean, it could be kind of a lifestyle business and you have a lot of freedom, right? But it's not necessarily going to become like some giant company either, but that's okay. And, you know, for, I think some people really value that, that freedom. And you could say like Uber drivers have this, right? Like, they can drive whenever they want or they can not drive. They have that freedom. So, you know, as, as a, as a business owner, you talk about freedom. It lets you also do what you want within your own business. Like, mm -hmm. let's say for example, you wanted to start your own TV show. Oh, we did that. Wait, shit, we did that. If you're listening, you got to come check out startup hustle TV. Now, the reason I bring that up is, is, but well, first off, we've created. We're launching a web series. First episode is February first of twenty twenty one. Because we okay, we learned with this podcast that we were able to really share the real story of entrepreneurship. We wanted to take that to another level. Now, our stories are somewhat interesting, but through this podcast, which we have over five hundred episodes of now. <laughs> We've met a hell of a lot of interesting people that are doing some really amazing things and they want to share those stories. So we're going to be doing that. But part of it, and you went through your interview. So we we do these formal interviews with entrepreneurs and then we also get them to cover their actual like kind of a journal, a video journal of what their life is like. But we at, we've asked every single cast member. And by the time this is said and done, that'll be a really long list. Like, why did you start your business? And a lot of them, you will see a lot of them saying, I wanted freedom, right? I wanted the ability to have control. And, you know, that's another one that is on the list is like, well, I wanted to have like, you know, so uh, it's still within a comment from Startup Hustle Chat is, well, money and control, you know, or maybe control of my own money. I want to have control of my own destiny. I will tell you, Matt, for me, that's a big part of it. I like, I, I don't know if I could do anything else. I've always felt like I needed to own my own business to be an entrepreneur. Um, the business can control you sometimes, but I, Hey, I've had it. I've had good times. I've had bad times. I will say that that part, that freedom and control part is when you get it right, it's satisfying. It sucks having a boss like that. That's a whole different world. So that's part of it too. Are you my, you're my boss, right? Uh, no, your wife is. True. Actually, I'm going to, I'm going to say that's not true. I work for a four-year-old <laughs> and a six-year-old. We both, we both do. Jill and I are co-workers and our bosses are named Dylan and Caden and dude, they're fucking demanding, man. <laughs> I've got four of them. Yeah. I only have two. <sighs> have you met my kids? No. Oh, yeah. They're your clone. <laughs> Dude, my well, my daughter, she 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 is an entrepreneur. She and by the way, if you want to see her version of the startup hustle promo, did you see that? Yeah. She she she'll tell you she's an entrepreneur. Her lemonade stand kicks ass. All right. 
another another reason we got from that that our uh, our chat the startup hustle chat folks had put it in here was boredom. Um, is that is did that have something to do with Stackify being born? No, I don't think so. But you know, I think it had something to do with Thin Solutions being bored born because I think this is how people get side hustles, right? Like they've got a primary job, but they're you know, looking for something else to do. And sometimes that something else to do turns into the primary thing. Yeah. And you know, now uh, when we recorded episode 500, I mentioned that Lyral Holt was uh, one of my more memorable episodes. And if you ask Lyral like what he does, he'll be like, I'm just a guy looking for something to do. Yeah. And, and, and honestly, I mean, on some days I am too, you know, like uh, you've said that to me before you're like, after you sold, now the reason I ask is because, you know, you sold exited vent solutions and you're 29 and you're like, what am I going to do? Like, what do I yeah. do? Am I just going to sit around? Cause you get, people like us get stir crazy in a hurry and, you know, but be careful what you're asking for folks. Cause you might get it. Okay. Another comment. And I think this is a big one. It's just passion. I, I, and this is a right reason to start a business, or at least it's a right element to start it. Because if you're passionate about what you're doing, whether it be the industry, the solution, maybe the people you, maybe the clients or users that you serve, I, in my opinion, that's a critical component of success. Because I think if you lack passion, then you're going to quit. Yeah, I think you definitely have to have passion. I think it can be dangerous too, though, because you could be so passionate about something that's never going to be successful and you pour all of your energy into it, like you and I both could probably name five people in Kansas City that have done this. And are, some of them are still working on this thing that is never going to go anywhere. Um, yeah. And it's are, blinding. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, so you need it, but it can also be dangerous. So speaking of passion, you know, check out some of the episodes that Lauren Conaway does because this is a different type of business and startup that she's got because she's the founder of Innovate, Innovate Her. And Lauren is one of the most passionate people I've ever met about what she does, but she's a servant leader. And, and for I mean, that's the true definition of what she does, but it's her passion that drives what she's doing and get has gotten just under 4,000 women to join that organization already. So, the, but without that passion, that would be a difficult thing to do. The people that you need to get excited about your startup are going to know if you're passionate about it or not. You can't fake it and you can't hide it. Now, speaking of passion, there's a thrill and a uh, energy to it that people describe me as passionate a lot, but we had that mention. So the thrill of it. So, uh, Brad Kellmeyer had commented in the uh, in Startup Hustle chat, the rush of conceptualizing and monetizing an idea. I find that exciting too. I think that is I think that is true. I think it's definitely fun. Um, there's a lot of different kinds of businesses, right? So it depends on the type of business that you're you're starting. But definitely if you're you're trying to very quickly figure out some really kind of unique idea and Try and do market testing. Figure out if this if this thing has legs. Is it could be a really big idea? I mean, all that can be extremely frustrating, but it can also be a, a big thrill and a lot of fun. That said, to solve a problem, and I'm, I, let me give you a couple a couple of those. So Kyle Steppy of KC Hempco said to solve a problem that they've encountered. Cornell Ellis said to fill a need and close a gap. Tyler Lecomte, I think that's how you say that. Uh, it's seven magic words. There's got to be a better way. And then, uh, man, I'm really going to mess this one up. Uh, uh, Oma, Omo Labake Tamaba. To improve a business process, cost, or unnecessary bottleneck. Solving problems, right? Yep. I, if you caught me at the right moment and you asked me what I do, I might just say I solve problems. Because that is what a founder or an entrepreneur has to do. If you're not good at solving problems, please do not start a startup. All right. Next. The next one was this was my, I answered my own question. Yeah. This uh, is why do people start businesses? And I, I, I'm unemployable. 
You are too, dude. I think you so, are yeah. completely, you and me, God forbid we ever have to get jobs because we are completely unemployable. Uh, now, Gina Danner had made the comment, many entrepreneurs can't function successfully in a typical organization. <laughs> Sound familiar? Yep. Yep. You try, By the way, Matt tried to hire me once and my rate was one Bitcoin per month. You, you screwed Matt, up. You, it's a, well, did, was that a real offer? <laughs> I, I don't think it was at the time. Or was that when Bitcoin was like 3000 Because it's pretty expensive. All right. Now, the next comment that came is from someone that I really got to know in 2020. It's someone I really respect and, and admire, and that's John Bucard. John's the founder of Tesseract. He's an inventor. He's done a ton of stuff. They do some really amazing stuff. He said human progress. It's a real thing, man. There's a lot of people that are just trying to advance stuff, that are just trying to make life generally better. Uh, there was a couple, you know, a couple sub sub comments I have under that, but that was John's comment. So Catherine Hogan said, for me, it's all about the what if. And what if, what if we had a better solution? What if we started a business? Hey Matt, what if we started a TV show? Don't ever start your own TV show, dude. All right, next in that, uh, still in the in this category, because the potential upsides outweigh the negatives. That came from Andrew Ryan. Andrew's a, a startup founder um, outside of our hometown. So you know, I that's a risk versus reward analysis that you should be doing anyway, right? Yeah, absolutely. And then one more. Apparently, it's to feel discomfort, unsureness, stress, and excitement all at the same time. That pretty much sums it up. Thank you, Kara Joy, for that comment. Once again, if you want to get your comment in for future episodes, come join us and start a puzzle chat. And then another one from John, which I this is I almost kind of feel is 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 maybe uh, uh, okay to make lifelong friends. I don't do now. I I'm going to challenge John a little bit. So well, he said the camaraderie and seeking out others of the same mindset. I buy that, but I don't do anything in business to make friends. Do you? No. Nope. I mean that's it, that's that's different. That's a club. That's not a business. And I think you got to be careful with that part of it. But I you know I I like the camaraderie. Uh, part of it, because if you are thinking about starting a tech company, you really should be trying to find other people to do it with. Because you know, fifteen years, and we're going to have a whole episode about co-founders and stuff like that. But yeah, you know, fifteen years ago, I wasn't a I wasn't a business partner, co-founder kind of guy. I'm one eight, 180 degrees the other direction on that, without a doubt. All right, and so we have <laughs> we have one more comment on this. Someone said, "Why do you want to start a startup?" to become a guest on the Startup Hustle podcast. Winner, Thank winner, you, winner, Eric winner, Juarez. Winner. Yeah. yeah, that is definitely the best comment other than the one I made, of course. So, you know, Matt, we talked about a lot of reasons that, that, that people do it. I think that this wouldn't be very complete or useful if we didn't talk about a couple why nots. You feeling, that? You feeling me on that? Absolutely. These are the most important. Yeah. What do you got? You hate your job. <laughs> That's not a reason. So that, because I hate my job, I shouldn't just go create one of my own, one for myself. Well, I mean, and sometimes I'd say this might lead to people who become freelancers. Probably a lot of freelancers happen this way, right? They work for some company and they've had enough, and so they go off <laughs> and start their own. You know, that's not necessarily a startup, right? But it's their own business. Um, and become freelancers that, that may work out, but it's not necessarily the great reason to like quit your job and then think you're going to go raise a bunch of capital and have some startup. That's probably not a good idea. I think, I think that there's a higher, a higher, uh, reason over that, that people need to think about. And that's intent. Like your intent needs to be pure on many levels. Like, and, and just because you dislike your job, like the, that's the, to me, that doesn't have and hold the same, the required amount of intentionality that most good businesses have prior to getting started. You know, it's like, if your intent is just because you hate your job, then 
get another job if that's the case. Yep. Hey, but Matt, what if I hate my boss? I hate my I hate my fucking boss. Wait, that's me. I mean, that's pretty much the same thing. Hating your job or hating your boss are pretty much all the same. I'm screwed, dude, because I hate my boss, which means I hate myself, which means that I can't start a business and I'm also unemployable. I don't know what to say. I, ex I You know what? I accept your offer. I will come work for one Bitcoin per month. You can sleep in my pool house if you need a place to crash. I want the bit, dude. No, because the Bitcoin's worth about forty grand a month all of a sudden. So I'll take it. I'm in. Um, but you know, dude, I'm in it for the money. That has got to be the worst reason ever to start a startup because like ninety five percent of them fail. I'm gonna be real with everyone listening. If this is the reason that you start your business you're probably going to fail because you're, that's not passion. Being in it for the money is not, it's back to that intention. You don't, that's not the right reason to do it. If you're passionate, you create value. You do something that's amazing that people want, that they need. You, you create peace of mind. You help people sell more. You help people sp spend less and you do it well, then money will follow. I think money is the byproduct of everything I just mentioned. And if you, it, I, I have had so many people ask me over the last however many years, how do I make more money? And I tell them every time you got to quit focusing on money. And, and they, and so many of them look at me like a dog that just saw a card trick. They're like, huh? But wait, but it's a, if you want to make money, you got to get good at something. The people I know that, that make have made and have money, they're good at something. They yeah. are usually really good at something. And it all starts there. If you're not going to be a master at what you do, if you're not going to be the best in the industry, blah, 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 money, that money ain't coming, but the money will come if you get really, really good at it. Now, Matt, you know what? Forget about money. I want to start my business because you know what, dude? I, I just, I want to, I, I want less work. Yeah, I think this only works for the idea of like being a freelancer or working for Uber or something like that. Not really owning a business that has multiple employees and stuff like that. You're just gonna have more work to do. More yeah, headaches. Those aren't start those aren't startups. You know, like yeah. <laughs> hey folks, st startups don't come with owner's manuals. And that and that makes them hard. That makes it really hard. I mean, they really don't. There's <laughs> You have to figure out how to do anything and everything at least once. A whole lot of stuff you don't know how to do. It's stressful. It is it, it, if you starting a business is going to be a hell of a lot more work than anything else you've ever done. So that is a really, really, really bad idea. Um, but you know, Matt, I, I, I mean, with that, I, I, I think it'd be easier than having a job. I think it's kind of related. I mean, only if you're like a freelance or something, not if you're really running a business, it's way more difficult, way, way more difficult. Well, what dude, I, but you know what? All right. Forget those other ideas. I, I want to be famous, man. I want to be a rock star. I want notoriety and status. I want people to, I want to be Elon. See for me, the, the money and the fame just kind of naturally happen. If that's what you start, start out trying to get, it's not going to happen. It's th those are sort of part of the, the scorecard and, and just what happens from doing a good job that eventually those things happen. You know, I mean, I would say at some point in time, I was probably somewhat famous in the automotive industry. Everybody knew who I was. Wasn't, I wouldn't say I was famous, but you know, in that industry, everybody would have known who I was. Um, Nobody would have known me at the grocery store. You're not famous until someone sends in fan art, Matt. We've already established that. If you are interested in creating fan art of Matt Watson, send it on in. We want we want to see it. But no, uh, so Matt, I you, I you know, as you're aware, I worked in the music industry for a number of years. I I know quite a few famous people in the music in the music business. None of them wanted to be famous. That wasn't their goal. They actually back to that whole becoming masters. They're actually just really, usually really, really good at what they do. Now that isn't always a great example because there are people that have succeeded that will, yeah, I wanted to be famous, but 
really overall, if that's the, if that's the true intent, you're going to have issues. If okay, you Matt, go, for, go ahead. Hold on. If all you want is to be famous, you should be focusing on how to be TikTok famous. You know, you can find Startup Hustle on TikTok. We have an account. And while you're there, I mean, since you're looking, you, we're on Instagram, the Facebooks, the Twitters, everywhere. Uh, but really what I'd like, if you're listening, I'd like you to head over to YouTube and check out Startup Hustle TV. Now, you've done a lot of things on the internet. So if you're interested in starting a tech company, I really want you to consider reaching out and talking to us at fullscale.io. The, uh, so many of the things that we've been through, we created that entire business to solve a problem, yep. to create value. And honestly, there were so many things that you, you've, you've built software bigger and better than I had. I've done a lot of things, but we, we created that whole entire business to solve a problem that not only we had at our business, but we were, t we realized that so many other startup founders, much like ourselves, had the exact same problem. So we started with that. But then as we built the business, we, we, the people said, well, what did you, how did you guys get to where you're at with full scale? I said, we talked to all of our peers, friends, and everybody. And we said, what do you not like about hiring developers? And then we did the opposite. Yeah, that, that was that, that was it. It was really yep. it. We you know, talk it. about like in, cr increasing communication, putting you in control of your project. Like you yet yeah, your tech company, if you aren't if you don't have a direct transparent line of sight to the people that are building your technology, I would I would I think it would be fair to say not only do you not only have any you don't have any control over it, you might not own it. Like you need if the people if the people that are building what you're passionate about are not in your direct line of sight and you don't have access to them because you're just talking to a project manager at some other company. We do the opposite. We put you in full control of your team. We get the hell out of the way. Call us if you need help. We give you know, we say what we do is rare. We specialize in recruiting, assessing, retaining, and employing. Right? And we take care of all of that and then your team's your team. And you can focus on doing other stuff. And that's really important. So Matt, I got one final reason here you know someone that i had someone asked me you want to start a business so i i mean i just thought that why not i mean people never ask me to start a business that's not true but is that why i should start a business because someone asked me to i mean that that could be the perfect reason if they're going to give you a bunch of customers or money right you're like hey i need somebody to mow my lawn please go start a lawn mowing company and i'll pay you to do it that would be okay yeah, I got one more. One more reason why not. And that's because you think you're going to make money doing it anytime soon. That's for damn sure. Now, you know, we talk about transparency. So how much how much did you pay yourself in the first several years that you worked at Stackify? Zero for the first like seven or eight years. While I do actually get paid to work for full scale now, I didn't get paid at full scale for half of the life of the company. And Vin Solutions yeah. was the same way. I didn't make any money at all for the first couple of years. And then I made basically like two thirds of what my salary would have been if I just got a basic job for another couple so of years. So you're not gonna make more money doing it right away and, no. and maybe not for a while because that can be an obstacle. All That's right, where you get so this. That's where you get the saying of uh, paying paying steak and eating hot dogs. You got to hire a bunch of people and, and pay them well, and they get to eat steak, but you're going to be eating hot dogs for a long time. Get ready. Or, or ramen. Hey, I like ramen noodles, dude. I had ramen noodles for lunch today. Don't knock ramen noodles. Not the kind I'm talking about, brother. Like the 10 cent package, the 10 for a dollar. That's Top what I had for lunch. It's probably because you're a startup founder, Matt, and True. you know you're on the budget. You're on the budget. So, what? As we arrive at the end of this episode, and and look, come check out Startup Hustle TV because we're going to be talking about a lot of this stuff. We're gonna and you're gonna we're gonna get a whole lot of people involved in showing you exactly, and I mean exactly what the ins and outs of entrepreneurship are like, what it's about. 
It, you know, look, we are putting a lot of really transparent, interesting, and in my opinion, valuable information out there. And come find us. We're all over the internet. You know, like, you know, a lot of good stuff that, and, and we won't publish it if it sucks. That's our brand standard, by the way. We want to find people that are going to tell you the truth. And I mean the real truth. The fact that this shit is not easy. Final comment on that. If you think any of this is going to be easy, then don't start the company. So, Matt, out of this list, we talk about a lot of stuff. Like, what's your what's your what's your top? What are your top ideas here? Like, what what are the things that really resonated for you on the on the whys that make that are good reasons why? Yeah, I, I mean, the the wrong reasons definitely stick out, right? Like, you don't like your job, you're in it for the money. Like, those are all the wrong reasons. The the, really, you got to be focused on solving a problem. And really, this usually works the best if you're an expert at something, you work in a specific industry. So for example, I worked in a medical a medical lab and we created some software for medical labs. 99% of the world would have no idea how any of that crap works. If you have industry experience that nobody else knows that you can go and apply and build something and then sell in the industry, that's the best place to be. But you've got to have some some expertise that's really valuable to solve a real problem that somebody will pay for. I I can't I mean my, I can't tell you I have a different opinion about what stands out for me. The good reasons why include passion. They include value. They include solving a problem because if you don't have at least two of the three three things that I just mentioned, you're you're in big trouble. Um, you know, business school will teach you that you have to do it better, faster, or cheaper. You got to get, you have to be at a, like an A grade and two out of three of those things, or you're screwed. Doing only one out of those three things is not enough. Like you mentioned, Matt, like you might be able to do it better, but can you do it faster or cheaper? Because if you don't get two out of three, yep. that you can you can survive a two out of three. Ideally, you want three out of three, but those are back to value. That's value. It's better, faster, or cheaper. There's a, there's a value in all of that. And yeah, really, in the end, I think that the, the final advice that I'd really like to give related to this, if you, if you are looking for, it, thinking about starting a tech company, is you got to know what you're getting yourself into. Um, like really, really, really vet it. Like look at it. I mentioned earlier, what's easier climbing the, the mountain on your own or asking those on top to pull you up. Find you, some mentors. Should be, you should be looking up and yelling, Hey, can I get a hand? Yeah. Like all day. I, and, Hey folks, look, I made a living doing that. And, and look, the people that will reach down and pull you up, someone did it for them. And there is a weird unspoken truth about them feeling like they needed to do that for others. And maybe you should look for, for a co-founder. Yeah. Uh, don't go at it alone. Yep. And there's, there, look, there's a lot. And that's, that's what I'm enjoying about Startup Hustle TV. Because, you know, yesterday I didn't have a great day as an entrepreneur. And I talked all about that on, on, on camera. And I published a video titled F.U. Failure. Because I had to say, fuck you, failure. Because you're going to fail a lot. And I had to tell failure, you're not going to win. F off. Get out of here. But there's a lot of tenacity. If you are defeated easily, don't do it. It Because you, <laughs> Matt, do you ever feel, does a day as being an entrepreneur, do you ever get to the end of it or a cycle of it or any of it? And you and I, I could have easily convinced you that you did, in fact, get in the ring with Mike Tyson. Dude, I would say every couple of weeks I have one of those days and every couple of weeks I wake up and I'm like, why am I doing this shit? Yep. For sure. And that's yep. spoken from one of the most successful people I've ever known and know. And that's the way it goes. It doesn't change. You don't get away from that. I mean, I, all, all of the people we know that we admire, that we consider to be peers, that we look up to, meaning Matt and Matt look up to. I do you, do you think Sandy would Sandy Kemper would tell us the same thing? It's not easy. 
No way. It's just on a different level and scale for all of you. So if you think that that part of it's going to go away, if you think you're going to get away from fighting and doing a whole lot of other stuff, once again, thanks for listening. If you have some time, go check out the Startup Hustle chat. Just go to Facebook, type in Startup Hustle in the search. We're in there doing a lot of cool stuff. I know that all the other people would love to hear what you have to say. Head over to YouTube, subscribe to Startup Hustle TV. If you're interested in being involved, being a guest, on the podcast, you have a suggestion for a guest of the podcast, go to startuphustle.xyz. You got to fill out the form there or you're not going to be considered. We've had a whole lot of people do it. We'd love to see you there soon. Matt, I'm getting back to work. I'll see you next time, brother. Yeah.